Hi everybody, Martin the Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying uh, a Bitch Creek Nymph It's like a classic Stonefly Stroke Attractor Nymph uh, I'm tying it up because we're coming into the spring and it'll be a good pattern for those uh, pre-spawn smallmouth Also works well for trout of course So I'm tying a size 4 and the hook I'm using is a TMCO 5263 I've already loaded it with O2O lead wire. It's got to crush the barb. And the lead runs, I just always run it the same amount from level where the barb was to an eye width behind the eye. That gives you tight space for your tying. Before I put any thread on, I'm going to take some super glue and run it over the lead. And that really just helps to add a bit of security, makes your fly more durable. It's well worth doing, it takes no time. So, just got to cover up the lead kind of quickly. Just touch it to take away any excess glue. And then, medium white round rubber legs for this size we'll take we're going to take two together and I just leave them together to make them easier to manage and trim it to length later And then just cover up that tag end of the rubber. You don't need to worry, you'll, you'll lose it with a chenille. But I wouldn't trust just a short, short tie end point like that. So, chenille, I'm tying a black and orange version. So I'm going to tie my black chenille in first on your side of the hook because it's a woven fly quite an easy weave with the chenille, the chenille really does weave very without too much problems it's no, it grips, it's no slippy I'm going to take my thread forward a couple of half hitches Snip it off. It just makes the weaving easier. Now I, I see a lot of videos of guys weaving and they turn the hook towards them, but I never bother. Um, I find it easier to weave just in the original the hook with the, in the original position. So I'm going to take my black over the back, and then the orange is behind it. I cross it over, bring the orange under, black over, orange under, black over. Orange under, black over, orange under, black over, orange under, black over, orange under, black over, orange under, and just keep going. Oops, try not to let go yet. And then when you come to where you want your thorax to start, I'll just hold the black up and pull the orange under, and then pull it back. Then I'll just trap it with my index finger. Get my thread again. And get it started. Just ignore the tag end. I'll take my, I'll take my orange first, which is trapping the black. Come across my thread, tie it off, trim my excess, trim away the excess of the thread, and then just catch my black. A couple of turns, 
fold it back and spin my bobbin. There we go. Just lock all that down. This helps you to have a sort of smooth that slip there. Just slipped off the edge of the ledge. You just need to wind the back, it's no problem. If it happens to you, don't panic. Just wind the back, catch that in. Tidy up. It's worth tidying up, a lot of people don't don't do that. And then you know the like the the fly ends up you end up with like a horrible ugly head and all that. And it's worth seeing, I think, just because just it's a bigger fly, you know, it should still be properly finished, I think, just from a fly time point of view. So, another two legs, again, to get, just leave them stuck together, tie them in at the eye, I'll take a turn or two below, just to help kick them up slightly. Put that tight, and then I'll just stretch this tag slightly, and wind the back. Right. And all the time I'm building a nice smooth underbody for my thorax hackle. I'm using just a red game with firmness saddle. This is a Mets. No, it's not it's a whiten. It's a whiten. Um, just a standard saddle. It's a nice big long longish fibred feathers on it and I go for quite a long fibre on the Bitch Creek Nymph and um, I think it's a that enhances the buggy look so I'm just going to tie that in by the base wind back just leave that line there and I'll take my black chenille that I've left And I'll take it forward. Always keeping it tight. And I'll catch it under the shank and the underside. Two or three turns. Trim away your waist. Just tidy that up. And then the last thing to do is just wind the hackle forward. I like to try to seat the hackle between the turns of chenille if you can. Um, I mean obviously non-essential but I think it gives you quite a, it sort of protects the hackle and gives a nice effect. Again, catch it underneath. Always keep tension in your thread. Two turns, fold it back. Anything going forward, the eye, just draw that back. And then a quick. That finish. And another. Drop the fibre there. Spot your hook and pull that. Come in, trim away your waist. You could just snap away the hackle and then you've not got any sort of eye crowding or anything. Come in with a wee bit of head cement. Get that coated up. And then the fly is done. What I'll just do is I'll just make my final trim of the legs 
and you can see that I don't need to worry because they're together, they're going to be the same length. And then to separate them, just grab one, grab one side and pull it. We tug, same bit front, go we tug. There you have it, the Bitch Creek Nymph. It's a pretty old pattern, but it's very effective, definite classic. Good smallmouth bass fly, good trout fly, good sort of generic stone fly pattern. Um, you know, if you live somewhere where there's salmon flies or something, it's well worth having some of these in your dogs. Hope that was useful. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Tight lines, guys. Bye.